why don't we get into our oh hi one crit wave back to you uh, we'll get into our our character our character presentation which will bring us now into the game hopefully and we'll pick up where we left off um, why don't we go with why don't we go with you Celine we'll start in the middle and we'll kind of work outwards uh, what is what's happening from Celine's point of view and what are your thoughts? Well, uh, currently, there, there is quite a large amount going on. We just found out a lot of very poignant inform very poignant information uh, regarding the way of the world, shall we say. Um, and it has left Celine in a very deep state of contemplation currently as she tries to figure out what to make of this. Uh... She's not all there yet, so currently she'll just be off in her own world, thinking. You you do have a couple, uh, I mean, if we're talking cats from earlier, you do have a, a couple loose strands here that are maybe causing you to look this way and look that way. Uh, as you have all, just a, a lot of things going on that you have, um, you know, you have this eye, you have this red book, uh, you know, you have this this sword from the past. There's also the... What the the conflict between the old ways of the old ways of um, Weejass and the new? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a big thing. It's a very a very very big thing. Um, I I've even thought about just writing a question into the book just to see if I get a response. Um. I know that you have been making some you have been making some notes inside of it and uh, there has not been a response to your notes. Yes. Uh, I, I've been writing down notes. Um, not so much question not so much questions in that explicit questions in that as it is just observations hmm. but uh, maybe that might be my first exercise for the session is I'm just going to sit down and just write a bunch of questions. Well, uh, you have uh, you have some toys that you can play with, and uh, you're welcome to do so uh, when we're when we're going here. Especially because you're, you know, you have a you have a direction, but there's a, a not necessarily a time limit ish. And so, if you need well, if you need to take a little downtime to explore this, uh, or if you want to ever want to do anything inside RP, you know that you can. But uh, yep, yep. and uh, hey, Baboonski, thank you very much for that follow. Uh, all right. Anything else from you, Celine, or shall I mosey on over to another character? Um, I think the only thing I can think of now is that uh, this tree is going to be a uh, massive pain as it draws magic, and we're all magic users. Yes. Still trying to figure out how to uh how to deal with this. Me too. I mean, what? <laughs> 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 I'm not uh, changing just because no, just because totally. there's uncertainty doesn't mean I'm not going to change it. I enjoy a challenge. Uh, Babunski says, "Good to be here. Loving the story so far. Well, uh, sit back, grab a snack and a drink, and uh, enjoy uh, as we're we're dipping into it now. Uh, let's pop over to Jade. Um, Jade, uh, you've you've had a, a kind of a, a rough evening, maybe, and uh, now a new day has come. And what's what's going on with you? Nothing much. Need to pick some flowers. Need." Need them. Um, <laughs> fulfilled the contract, end up making things work out, and need to end up making sure that everyone stays on track picking the pretty flowers. That's all that really matters right now. Uh, I need to end up making sure that when that's said and done, that the light keeps its word. Because mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's not supposed to be it's really not and yet it is now i have to end up taking the time to actually confirm i don't like it i don't like it one bit and it's here and it's taking everything off course but it needs to happen so it'll be done All right. Um, 
we'll pop over to uh, we'll pop over to uh, Mordecai. Uh, Mordecai, you are flanking uh, Celine with Jade, so you get a plus two to hit. And by that I mean, what's what's going on with you? What's your story? <laughs> um. Well, definitely concerned about this uh, this tree and everybody's safety in regards to it, uh, since it needs magic. Some of us are. Uh, one of us, namely me, is a little concerned that um, this uh, this tree will dispel and whatever's holding me together at the moment. Um, all of that's just weird, and I feel like the condition's progressing as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm I need to talk to Celine about that. I need to divulge information to her that I haven't actually um, been sharing. Oh my! And uh, I don't know. Like it's, it's it concerns me. Um, I don't want to be a danger to everyone here. I don't want to be the person who who ends up being the reason that the party is. In danger. I, I can't. I can't do that. Is that just selfish for you, or what if, what if another party member ends up being the one? I don't know what I'd do. Hmm. Well, you have a walk ahead of you. You have a general direction, so it seems like you're going to be traipsing through the woods for a while. Might be time to talk, to think, uh, plot, plan. Fortunately, you do have a, um, I mean, she is a discredited sage, but, you know, it's uh, any port in a storm. You do have someone who's researched death, has studied it, and you are in this in-between. And, um, yep. you know, uh, you, you may not like necessarily the, the deity that she worships, but it might be a, a bittersweet victory if that study ends up helping you get uh, get some sort of personal victory. I don't like being a test rat. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like this is that that finding a cure is less and less possible. All right. Just the way that things the way that things are progressing, it's it, it's a long shot. It is, and it's. I guess it's going to be how much. How much do you want it? Are you willing to become a lab rat if it means becoming alive? Uh, <sighs> is, uh, or as I often say, is the juice worth the squeeze? Um, you, yeah. you might have a sense of pride, and, and maybe that pride is something that helps you feel alive. Uh, but what if what if that pride needs to, you know, or that bitter pill is, is actually a piece of humble pie that you have to eat? Um, are you willing to lay yourself low in order to rise up again, if it's even possible? It could just be a big old risk, and you, you end up falling on your face. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, let's pop over to... Let's pop over to Bright. And then I will be very nice and let Norlai go last. So, Bright, what's going on with you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's... Um, I mean, I'm kind of concerned, too. Not as concerned about stuff and stuff as Mordecai. Um, because um, I don't think I just feel like the they wouldn't dispel him all at once so even if he like dipped in a little toe he'd probably be okay but um, I can understand him not wanting to take that risk um, and I'd feel pretty bad if I said I'm sure it'd be fine and then it wasn't I just kind of suspect but um, I'd like for the rest of us to at least go there because then we could all get cured of our various problems. I mean, I have the vampire thing too, and I don't want that. And also, Jade has the vampire thing too, mm -hmm. and I don't think it bothers her as much. But it would be nice if she could get rid of it. And then norlai has got her crystal thing, and the tree has a crystal thing. So I'd like to see if there's some sort of connection there. Um, but I'm just... So I'd like to... Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just not sure if we have to fight have to fight the tree or not. I'd rather not, because we're not really very well equipped to fight it. And, of course, it's a tree, so maybe it'll just stand there and we can shoot arrows at it. 
But at the same time, if you shoot arrows at trees, it doesn't really do anything most of the time. So, um, yeah, I still don't really know. But um, I guess all that, all that we can do is just keep on pushing on, and we'll be there just as quick as we can. Okay, that's all. Yeah, shooting an arrow at a tree, if you, if you think about it, it's a, a little grisly, because it's sort of like tearing off someone's finger and throwing it at them and saying, stop hitting yourself. Uh, or if it's a club or something, just like a big wooden weapon. <laughs> Uh, Bombard, have they fed on mortals? Um, yes. Ish. One of us has? Like the smallest amount? <laughs> From two of the party. <laughs> qualifier, 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 but yes. <laughs> it was only a little bit. I. I mostly feed on animals. It's fine. It's just a little taste. Uh, oh, and speaking of animals, uh, we have our, our zookeeper here, Norlai Kilmus. Uh, what's going on with you? All my animals are perfectly clean. I, get, I give them all a very nice bath. Yes. They all smell very nice, which is good because we've been traveling a lot. Are we counting Herbert as an animal? Yes. Okay. He, he was well watered. Okay. <laughs> enough to enough to a bath and then it drinks its own bath water. I guess that's efficient. <laughs> yep. And then, like, well, the pets are good. We're all good. Um, but then they're talking about this this fleshy tree, and that's kind of weird. Yeah. But like, everyone's scared, and I'm just like, we we don't need to really fight it, or you know, use magic at all. We just need to have someone run in and get the stuff, and run out. And like, they're like, oh, we're gonna all die to it. And I'm like, no, you just have one person go in, you know, we give them all our magic buffs away from the zone they run in and get out. And, you know, it's all good. But no one thinks much is good. Well, I'm glad that you sound that you, you sound that you are, you sound like you are in a much better mood right now, Norlai. I know you've been kind of bummed for a while. Yeah, I'm doing good. Well, well, let's hope that continues um, as we apparently explore an anti-magic flesh tree. Uh, <laughs> uh, always look on the bright side of life or on life as is appropriate. Uh, all right, so let's go over to... Uh, we, you were uh, in the Tumbled Wench making plans. Well, I mean, you were out and about. You actually had a picnic with uh, Siphonix. Um, you know, you, you had gone over some facts about what's, what's going on in the territories around Mesotopia. Uh, you had a very good meal and you were discussing, you know, what, what it is that Siphonix was looking, uh, for you to gather. And then you were discussing more about how do we address this? How do we go and collect a crystal cluster? Uh, and also crystal cluster. Uh oh, that sounds kind of familiar to something. Now, what's this weird flesh tree and bright? You're, you know, you're saying, have I heard of this? This seeming like if something like that was happening in Uct also, what's what's going on? And no, this this would be news to you. Um, and then there's this weird flying thing, and then of course you got to get sap from the tree also. Uh, just a, a lot of a lot of uh, here and there and everywhere. And um, we'll pick up with your plans because really, the timeline is yours. Um, Siphonic said he'd still he'd be remain here for six days. Uh, however, you know, it could take a while. Could take all six days. Could take only two days, because the tree is given in a vague direction uh, or a description to you. Uh, but the timeline is yours, and I will relinquish uh, part. You know the, the direction of the narrative over to you. <clears throat> well, the sooner we handle it, the sooner that uh, he can help us with whatever it is that we need help with. You know, we got other places to be. So Cel Celine is kind of in thought for a couple of moments before she pipes up and she's like, Oh, they better not have touched my house. Oh, oh if they've red sacked my house, I'm gonna be pissed. The uh, about the, the the things going on in Lacuna? 
yes, about the dragon graveyard. If they're trying to defile the dragon graveyard, well, they'll, they'll probably be looking for supplies and things. And what's just so happens to be out there? Yep, uh, that there was something special at your house. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Is there, I anything, that. Is there anything special at your house? Um, no, not anything super special. I took all of my uh, all of my religious implements and things like that with me, but. There is some things like non-perishable food and things of that nature. Just things that are more generally useful. Okay. And it's the principal! That's that, that's that's my house! <laughs> We've got more pressing issues than uh rations at your house right now. Well it's 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 more than that. It's it that 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 house that it's it's a shack, really. It, it, I've done a lot of work there. Mm-hmm. Sentimental value for sure. Okay. Yes, lots of lots of lots of. You turn the stove off or the garden hose, or you forgot to cancel your subscription to Play Orc. No, I very I, lewd content. No, <laughs> no I, I I made sure to do those things. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Not getting caught with my uh, metaphorical or literal pants down. <laughs> it's like, but we do need to figure out what we're going to do with this tree because it absorbs magic. And we're all magic casters. Yeah. Well, get in. So go. So going in and going. Like the best part. Go, yeah, going in, grabbing the stuff, and getting out might not be that easy, because... Well, that's what, I, that's what I brought up last, when we were at the picnic. <laughs> yeah. My, but... my, 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 what I'm thinking is that it could be that the only way to, you know, harvest its sap, harvest its bark, or whatever, is using magical weapons, or magical implements, or magic, which don't work. I mean, maybe you could just stab it with your sword. That would, I mean, usually dead magic zone doesn't suppress magical items. Usually only anti-magic field. That's good by accent. I mean, yeah, we don't really know. That's the thing. We know so little about it, and nobody can tell us anything about it. Siphonix has already told us everything he can, which is almost nothing. And so unless somebody, I mean, we could ask around town and see if anybody has been there before or know something about it. But all we're really doing is guessing, and we're not going to make any progress guessing. Yeah. So we, I think we should either find somebody who knows about it, or we should just go check it out. I'm all for just to go checking it out. I'm surprised to hear you say that because you could die. Mm, I'm not going to stay way behind because <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. very far behind. Well, that, is, that, is a th that is a thing. Siphonics has been very helpful in the, the, the creation of, of, of potions and things of that, of, that na of that nature. He's very in tune with that kind of stuff. So, you know, maybe... If this has these particular properties, I might be able to do something about it, if you know what I mean. You like, always talk so vaguely, just get to the point. <laughs> uh oh, dependent. Grumpy bar, Grumpy bar. Dep warning. <laughs> dependent <laughs> on the properties that the, the parts that we extract from this tree possess mm -hmm. I might be able to work with Siphonics <clears throat> to create something akin to a cure if not a cure wait what? Yes. cure well this thing nullifies magic right? yeah My, 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 my thought is this: if this has, if the, if the parts of this tree have innately anti-magical properties, mm -hmm. 
and if I can get a sample of my own to study, I might be able to turn it into a... a... Not so much a cure, but something that might be able to help your uh, ailment. Whether that be a full-on cure, or just a panacea to ease the hunger pangs, or something that'll just make you not hungry, ever. That would be ideal. It, it'd just, it'll depend on the properties of the stuff that we harvest from this tree. So we're gonna have to go have a look at that, and I'm going to have to sit down and do quite a large amount of experimentation with it. Uh, Jade, Not so much with you, but with it. Jade, to make sure you know that, that Siphonix is a, is a potion maker. Uh, you have received a potion from Siphonix before. Not that I, I'm not prompting you to patients. say anything necessarily, Jade, but as Celine's talking about, oh, we could possibly do this and make a, a fantastic potion, uh, you know that you received a potion from Siphonix. Hmm. Well, I mean, Celine did mention that as, like, well, you know, she could get uh, with Siphonix here, she could get his help because. She did mention that, yes, he was a potion maker. We did get potions from him before. Because of the um, healing potions that we received back in the days of Raphael and uh, Tazre journeying with Bright and Jade. And, of course, myself. So... Celine is having ideas. Celine is having a brainstorm moment. And... Hopefully something good comes out of it is what she's hoping. She's hoping that something good comes out of this. All right. Well. Anything else Thanks. we want to grab before we go? Um, I can't think of anything. Uh, as you all are speaking, uh, you can hear that... Uh... The uh, the bartender is is uh, he he pipes up, get out of here with this! I, I don't need that sort of quackery. Come on, you gotta drink it, drink it, but don't try and push this this stuff. It, it, don't don't try and get business away from me. Uh, and there's a person at the bar says, but the water bug in the vial is clinging to the blue part. It means that the weather's gonna change. I swear it. And the bartender says, no, just I kn you've been here before. Come on now. Come on. Um, Selene is going to walk up to the bar. Because that, 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 that has, uh, this quackery has, uh, caught her attention. And, uh, <laughs> it's just like, is, is, is something the matter, gentlemen? I'm not hearing your fluffy if you're saying something. I said I would like to hide and see if I can eavesdrop as well. Uh, th there's people you can sort of hide behind, or there's a, I don't know, you can dash underneath someone's stool or table. Hey, you, you could, you could hide behind Celine. Yeah, you can probably oh, I just... wanna, I wanna be a little further away than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's bad. Um, uh. and the, 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 this person looks over at you and says, oh yeah, well, if you're interested in medicines, I have all kinds of cures and remedies. Uh, you, d and then looks over at the bartender who gives them that, that look. Uh, but um, we'd have to talk outside, I'm afraid. Um, so Selenian kind of raises raises a hand to like raises like a hand to the bartender. It's like, I would like I was like I would like to see what he has. I myself am a uh, studious sort. If you wish to know whether his wares are true or not, I would be more than happy to tell you. Um, sure. All right. So he's, he's looking nervously about, but, uh, we'll escort you out to his wagon. Um, so Celine and possibly Bright are going to go outside, uh, because the bartender seems to not like this particular individual. Um, that leaves Norlai, Jade, and Mordecai inside the tumbled wench. And, uh, what would you all, I mean, you can go out too, you can go to your room, you can go around town if you want to try and, uh, find information. Bright suggested maybe we can... We can track down some info or someone who's been out that way or even knows what this thing is. I'll ask the I'm, bartender that. I'm hoping that maybe this person knows something. They seem to at least claim to know things. Okay. 
So Bright, Bright and Selene are outside. Mordecai, you said you want to talk to the bartender? About the, the tree, yeah. See if sure. he knows anything about it. Jade? <laughs> this individual who has a bunch of quackery and what have you, um, Jade is currently looking across and just there there's this i'm assuming that everybody else has already expressed that they have an interest in what this person might know about the tree and what have you um however i don't have the time to ask 20 questions Okay, um, I will then as conversations or thoughts occur, uh, let me. I'm just doing this from across the room. Yep, no problem. Oh boy, a deep dive. So, just give me his brain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. So hey, you're there. Just pick it uh, in there, flip it through the files, <laughs> tree, tree, skin, <laughs> potions. That's a little surly, but I'll save that <laughs> later. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, Norlai, besides, uh, besides stealing another tiefling cookie. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my um, goodness. Is she? Yes, yeah, she did. Not only did she steal another tiefling cookie, you better mark that off on the sheet. What are you doing, Norlai? You want to stay in the in here? You want to go... I don't know, pet the animals. I think uh, she's the raw slide of hand for that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. We had you do that last time, Norlai. Mm-hmm. Hey, I don't need a roll. Oh, God. Goodness. A mighty sneeze comes from somewhere in the bar. Ooh. I have stolen a cookie. <laughs> so that, that's a 17 slide of hand. I, does that, that exceeds your passive perception, right, Mordecai? Passive? Can I actively perceive? Uh, well, there. Mm, you really have been talking about it. things and are otherwise concentrating, discussing magical theory. You know, will I? Will my a total existence be undone if I, you know, stick a, a pinky toe in anti magic? So I think you're a little. I'll, I'll tell you what. Because she okay. has stolen one before, and you did catch her after the fact, I will mm -hmm. let you roll perception, but at disadvantage. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm so distracted. a seven or a six, uh, even if you had advantage. Uh, and so uh, while the meta you as Coffee Cat realizes you have to deduct a cookie off of your uh, off of the, the, the total in your pack, um, Mordecai, <laughs> the tiefling, doesn't know that a cookie has been pilfered. Uh, Norlite, no, what are you doing distracted. then? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to go outside and eat my cookie so he doesn't see. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> so she, she just kind of scampers off and... Uh, and packs that cookie away like a little squirrel with a cheek pouch or something. All right. <laughs> with a three-pointer. Flying <laughs> <Coffee> cat. cat. <laughs> She's been a nuisance. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> this is why I love cats. And especially when they upset you and you just look at them and you go, I love you so much, cat. I love you so much. <laughs> Violent it's thoughts are ticking. Wanna... See, if I did that with my cat, I need to, like, I can't give it that nice little three-point lob. I actually need to, like, almost give it that football pass in order to make it onto the couch. <laughs> right? To the point where I'm not worried about what they're going to land on. Ironically, I need to do more force to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying yeah, for your cat, you need to use the bank shot. I, I think it's um, more shot put. It's the E instead of Kobe. <laughs> I think this is why I have dogs. <laughs> dogs are ten times more fun because then it's this two-handed, like almost, uh, it's a caber toss at that point. <laughs> um, 
real quick on your initial on the surface thoughts uh you're not getting anything that's necessarily malicious uh jade you're not getting like oh i'm gonna totally go you know merc this uh i'm gonna go merc this uh this woman in an alleyway and steal her uh steal her coin purse or whatever um he he's actually excited and uh he has a lot of different like obscure names and and even like bugs and you know it's a, you're, you might be familiar with some of the bugs but there's like bugs and barks and all sorts of stuff that is going through his mind he is a little concerned um uh, because he he's the object of scorn by people and so actually getting this kind of attention from someone is making him happy and you're also getting that his name is bellum um and let's see okay. on your deeper dive uh you see he doesn't seem to have ill intent i mean he still may be a quick a, a, a quack that believes in uh a quack that believes in his potions and, and whatever whether or not they work eh. uh, it, but this is certainly alternative medicine uh, even for a, a D and D, you know, world, a, a fantasy world of you know magic and remember the leeches go on the eyeball. <laughs> um, and it did fail the wisdom saving throw. Um, it's reasoning, it's emotional state. He's actually quite happy. Um, and something that looms large in its mind, such as something he worries over, loves, or hates. Um, and that's really. Uh, you're, you're picking up that he worries that people aren't taking him seriously um, and that he wants notoriety. He actually wants people to recognize his name and uh, and for it to be, you know, a, a popular name. Uh, he feels like he's discredited or shunned because he has these alternative uh, approaches. Um, uh, and I think... And you're not questioning him, so this is what you're picking up on the surface and with your deep dive. Um, you know, he seems to be harmless enough, he's very excited, and he has something to prove. Alright. Um, oh, th there you okay. go. Uh, Bombard is providing just a little bit more, a little bit deeper dive. Um, he believes that he's cursed by the goddess of misfortune. Um, so... There you go. Well, I mean, once I talk to him properly, I might be able to identify such things. All right. If it's the, if it's the truth. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. It, it, it's probably important that Jade not you know detect it first. Like I'm totally gonna murder this person in an alleyway, you know, because yeah. then Jade might want to act on on behalf of you know going and saying like Celine, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you, and uh, suddenly you know you two are walking out to the parking lot together to make sure no one's gonna jump you, kind of a thing. Our have you not been paying attention to what Jade does? <laughs> uh, I mean, you might have then become the creep to creep on the creep who's going to creep on Celine. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured I'd at least establish that you have the opportunity to do something, whatever that is, beforehand. Um, but there seems to be no nothing overtly uh, menacing. Uh, all right, so Norlai's off. Mordecai's going to talk to the bartender and... Uh, Jade, you're kind of sticking behind and reading minds uh, until further notice, I suppose. Just um, hiding in the crowd, avoiding anybody seeing her face. Uh, then, uh, so Mordecai, you're just asking questions of the bartender about uh, the tree? Yeah, just the, the different aspects of it that make it unique. Offering that to the bartender and see, asking if he knows if he knows who that what where that tree is or knows anybody who does um he doesn't know anything specifically about that he says it sounds kind of gross but there's all kinds of weird stuff happening lately and honestly there's so many different tales uh, uh of you know trees that come alive or trees that have faces or trees that walk around or just you know ancient trees and new trees and and you know when you live in such a sylvan community like this there's all kinds of just rumors and stories and and people who say I found this you know very rare wood or this, so he's he's not giving anything direct. He's not like oh yeah that's the old flesh tree. Why you just go down to, go down the road a piece? You can't miss it. Um, but but these kinds of things happen in a very localized kind of area. Yes. He's well he's never heard of a flesh tree, um, so that well, that's a new one that he's happy to add to the repertoire of all the the random stuff people talk about. 
But the fact that it has like purple leaves oh, or like pink leaves or what have you. Um, he tells you a couple local of varieties stuff. can have that uh, this time of year. Um, but with what Siphonix described, he says that one doesn't sound familiar. So it could just yeah. have been someone who saw it, you know, caught it in a, in a beam of morning sun as it went through, you know, the, the color changing leaves of autumn or spring. And uh, it looked pink because that can happen with some of the trees. Uh, you know, th there's all sorts of things that he just sort of dismisses and says, look, you live in the woods, you see all sorts of stuff. You know, you swear that there's shadows following you, but then you realize it's just the, the sun playing through the canopy or it was just a squirrel the whole time. Or, you know, if, if you're not used to this kind of stuff, like I hear all sorts of tales that our woods are haunted. But I've been living here all my life. I've been serving people who lived here all their life. And, you know, a lot of it is just chalked up to the, the forest can seem like a scary place. But if you get to know it, um, you know, you live in harmony with it as best you can then, you know, the, the forest will provide for you. It's nothing to be scared of. It's, it's natural. Not even, a not even a place that kind of is famous-ish for fairy tales. Yeah, the fairy tale, that, that, those are holdovers from the past. You know, th those are all just legends. Those are things that, uh, well, I don't know, these days you hear things, but, you know, th those are stories from the past, you know, cautionary stuff you tell your kids so that they don't play in the woods when you're not looking. Mm. Because, yes, this is a natural place. It's full of beauty and splendor and wonder, miracles of life. But also, you know, things happen. Uh, you know, you might get eaten by a predator. Not that it necessarily is trying to hunt you, but it's hungry. And it'll kill you and eat you. Uh, and so you, you got to tell your kids something to try and keep them in line. Thanks. You've been a big help. And I walk away. Yep, yep. Anytime. I have all sorts of stories. I also have a lot of, uh, you know, drinks I could sell to people who want to come up to the bar and chat for a while. He's curled up on Gavin's jacket. <laughs> Just, all right. Yeah, that's... that's... <laughs> all right, then. Bye. <laughs> I, follow, I follow out the door where, uh, where Celine went. All right. Um, so you'll you'll come into this conversation at some point in time because you would have been held up for a little while talking to the bartender. He would have had to take breaks to serve people. Uh, you know, it's kind of lunchtime. People are in for like a light beer, you know, some meal orders, that kind of a thing. Um, if you've ever gone to like a bar and grill during lunch, you know, it's popular. People come in for like a happy hour drink. Hopefully no one's uh, in to get sloshed at noon, but eh, there's always that one person. Um, so you'll, you'll come in at some later point in time. So this is going to give Celine and Bright an opportunity to uh, to interact with uh, Bellum, the uh, Bellum, the the I guess discredited uh, merchant here. Okay, but I'm wanting to stay out of sight still. Sure. Uh, go ahead and make a uh, stealth then. Maybe I'll stay in sight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you do your best, uh, you know, but unfortunately, you you step in, uh, uh, you, you step in a puddle or something like that, or. Uh, or, I, I don't know, unfortunately, there must have been a stray dog, and, you know, you step in something kind of... And you go, oh, really? Or <laughs> whatever whatever the recent reaction was that you can pull from memory. And uh, it's so bright. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll press to digitate my shoe. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that much more convenient in this D&D &D world to be able to do that? <laughs> it is. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, I like moments like this. You know, it's a high fantasy world. We're talking about flesh trees and vampires and invading armies. But you know what? When you step in dog poop, it's really one of those moments that it just makes the world real. You know, it, it, it brings it home and it really puts you into the game. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, okay, so you t you two go out. Celine, I guess you're in the lead here as uh, Bright is kind of uh, hopping along, needs to attend to her shoe real quick. Um, while she's still trying to be sneaky. So you're going to have Bellum, this merchant here, for uh, just a little bit by yourself. Not that he's parked too far away. Uh, he has his uh, his wagon hitched uh, to a, a hitching post on the road. And um, it's you know, nothing fancy. It's not like a big covered wagon, like a, a gypsy wagon or a uh, uh, like the wagon we painted up that was um, Esmeralda's from Curse of Strahd for the, uh, the Vistani. Um, it's pretty utilitarian. It has like a very, it has uh, like a canvas awning. Uh, just above the driver's seat. I mean, if there's a driving rain, this person's going to get wet anyway. Um, but there are all manner of, like, trunks and chests in the back. 
uh, that do have that they're all like chained together and have various locks. Um, and so you know he he brings you out and um, uh, notices because uh, you you carry yourself overtly for your faith, correct? Like your holy symbols out, and you you're you're fine wearing the the vestments of your station. Um, well, current currently, Celine is wearing some stuff that's relatively plain, and which is sort of an amulet. Is actually hidden under her clothes at this point. No, he wouldn't be able to oh, tell. Okay. Okay. Um, then. Uh, um, okay, so he he's not going to suspect anything straight off because uh, he's going to ask you questions like, "Oh, you know, what's aching you? Is it your knees? I got a, I got a potion for your knees." Uh, you know, are you looking to make your ears longer? I got a pill for that. Um, there's all kinds of, uh, remedies, whether they're real or, you like, I've never considered making my ears longer, but sure. <laughs> um. Oh, well, so, so you should really try making your ears longer. It's really fun. <laughs> no, no, my, 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 but my, they're actually my, pretty long. <laughs> My slightly pointed ears are just fine, thank you. Oh, okay. But, I would just simply like you to show me a sampler of your way. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, as, as, uh, as Norlai, uh, or, uh, as, I'm, I'm sorry, some random inspiration, uh, has said, you know, oh, yeah, I have, uh, I have weight loss pills, uh, you know, if, if you're... Uh, you know, ma'am, uh, if you're ever looking to lose a couple extra pounds, I got these, uh, I got these waste, uh, these little weight loss pills, kind of rattles around some, uh, like a powder. Um. Yes. A, a, a sampler. A simple, what, what are you most well known for? Show me. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I, I collect herbs and roots. They have different curative properties. Uh, I, I'm not, uh, look, the, the natural world provides, I, I use bugs and eggs and, uh, leaves and all kinds of, uh, things like that, you know, diff mixing different fur and claw together, uh, fin and feather and all that other stuff, uh, you can, you can draw wonderful, wonderful things. Yeah, honey makes a fine antiseptic. Have you ever tried slathering honey on your wounds? I've tried it slathering honey on my food. It is, it is a, uh, it is a simple, um... It, it is a simple antiseptic, yes, when you're in a pinch and have nothing else, but but by all means, just grab a couple of things that you think that I might be interested in, and I will we'll go from there. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, and, sure. Uh, and, and for you, little lady, uh, do you want yeah. anything in particular, or do you want a, a sampler as well? Do you want to grow um... tall? Do you want to... You want... Different color don't want hair. To grow tall. No, I don't want either of those things. Those are the worst things you could possibly offer me. Um, no, I want. Um, so, I'm more on the supply side. Um, I've a very special tree in your town that has magical properties and also anti-magical properties and I think it could really help you in your potion making and my friends and I this is Celine, she's one of my friends but I have others, uh, we were going to go look for that tree and we were thinking that maybe you might know something about it and in trade for information we could maybe bring you back a piece maybe huh, well, well think about it here Mm, and he's gathering a couple things for you, Celine. Uh, he uh, he turns around. Uh, he, he's he's looking down at you, Bright. He's considering that while he then goes back and opens up a trunk. Um, looks at you, Celine, and uh, asks, "Hey, Celine, can you smile for me real quick?" Uh, if you if you I'm sorry, if you didn't introduce yourself, he doesn't have a mind power he's using. But he says, "Ma'am, can you smile for me real quick?" She'll give a small smile. <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. It looks like you might be able to use some of these. Uh, there's a jar that has, that's like, it's in a burlap sack, so you can't really see what's inside. Oh, these for sure, these for sure. Um. May I? Uh, well. Mm, I suppose, yeah, if you're interested, you, you, you did bring coin with you, right? You, you didn't just come out to a medicine wagon to not purchase something. No, I have All right, well, here. Uh, I don't have a ton of these, so I can't I keep 
he brings it over. Very sorry, good, sorry. good showmanship here. Brings it over, like undoes the the tie at the top of the the burlap sack and kind of brings it down. And inside is uh is kind of a a murky water, and there's some little things that are like swimming around inside. These these right here. These are uh, these are teeth leeches. What you do is you smile real big and you put a couple on your teeth and your gums and they crawl across and they just eat up all the gunk that it accumulates in your teeth and they pull blood out of your gums to make them really like pink and fresh. It rejuvenates your mouth. You know they'll they'll, they'll, like, um, they'll crawl over your tongue and they'll they'll eat all the they'll eat all the all any any of the crud. If you have bad breath, if you have bad breath, these little guys will take care of it. You just gotta stay still for an hour as they do their work. Can I roll a medicine check to see if those will actually do as he's saying that? Uh. Go, uh. Let's do this. Do a nature. Nature? Yeah. Ooh, hey. that's a natural 19. Uh, so you're not seeing the leeches themselves. I mean, leeches and other lamprey do, you know, affix themselves, and they do, uh, uh, you know, Draw there's, like, there's like little stream fish, uh, like uh, plecos that are known to just sort of like adhere to rocks, and, and they just sort of eat the moss and other stuff. Um, and so he's saying that this particular brand of what he's calling a leech is going to act like a, you know, a fish tank cleaner, and is just going to like squiggle around inside your mouth and cheeks and tongue and. Uh, and blah, 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 all over your teeth and your gums to kind of suck up the bad stuff and, you know, really draw the blood up to your gums and, and make them all pink and fresh and wonderful. Um, so it, there are creatures that, I guess, do this, maybe not in the application of a mouth. Um, you know, and I, I'm giving you an intrinsic kind of medicine tie into this, just be, but you're looking for nature. Could something like this exist? And things like this do exist, but to the capacity that he's saying... Um, if this is weird, you've not heard of it applied this way before. Um, so this is where we're getting into kind of alternative medicine or the application of things that you know would be sort of, you know, a lamprey uh, is kind of like a, a parasite on something else. Uh, and in this case, um, eh? Yeah. Um, could I roll an insight to see being disingenuous? Uh, Sure. Uh, also, with that 19 nature, because he was swirling around, he was, he was talking about weight loss. Um, oh, he, uh, no, I mean, he's, he's a poor, misunderstood person who practices alternative medicine. Probably discredited in his field. Oh, doesn't your heart go out to him, uh, Celine? Um, no. You're, you're pretty sure the weight loss pills might actually just be tapeworm eggs. Yeah. It's like, she kind of just has a look, and she's like... I see, I see. Hmm. The kinds of things that you're offering. Somewhat alternative. And I mean, some of them a little more dangerous than uh, the average folk would like, I think. Well, it's nothing that, uh, you know, it, it'll get the job done, and it's nothing that is, uh, it's permanent. And uh, the best part, look, some people have an aversion to magic, and I'm offering you holistic remedies. No magic involved. It, it's nature taking its course. Yes, because artificially implanting tapeworms in a person is nature taking course. Of course, that's where they belong. It's where they do their best work. You should see the people who have gone on my method. They have they have shed weight like none other. I would like to roll another insight on just on that very statement alone, because it's like they've shed weight, hey. Well, I mean, a desiccated corpse is also shed weight if you know what I mean. Um, no, you don't need to you don't need to roll for it. He's he. Uh, again, you you got a nineteen nature. Uh, you know, tapeworms. You know, people who are afflicted by them. Uh, you know, do lose weight because the worms are competing for the nutrients absorbed in the intestines. And so if the worm is absorbing the fat and other nutrients that the body should, then they're losing weight. And uh, and so then and then when once you reach the preferred weight, you simply get rid of the tapeworms. 
and then the the job is done. Yes, but does he have something to get rid of the tapeworms? Because get it? Because I mean, these days we have things like laxatives in the and the and uh and the like to get rid of them. But I mean, this we're going we're going our ways back here. Um. Well. He's not really indicated or tried to lie one way or another about that on the resolution, so you could just straight up ask him, uh, unless yeah. you want to do it through a skill and try and be sly about it, or you know make it sort of like a passive aggressive or like a, a veiled threat. Um. Yeah. Um. I'll. I, I will ask him. It's like, so putting in the putting in these uh the the these tape work. Do you have anything to get them back out after they're done? Yes. Um, you see, I... Well, I am here offering natural remedies. I am a practitioner of the divine. I do have the uh, curative magics uh, that are given to people of my station. And so, uh, should a person reach their preferred weight... I do have a spell that will eject the tapeworms from them, and they will be not only at the weight that they desire, but then they will be worm-free. So you don't have anything non-magical, say, to deal, to deal with it? Any non-magical what? To deal with what? way to get rid of the tape oh well i do yes if it comes down to that uh i can use magic i i try not to because unfortunately a lot of people especially around here i don't know it, it's like they have different superstitions people are accusing me of just curdling milk by walking past their their house they treat me like i'm some sort of of quack of some you know some witch doctor, some, someone who doesn't like a, a, a hedge wizard of some kind that doesn't know what I'm doing. Uh, I do have natural ways. I, I do have laxatives and other and, and he'll even like go and sort of like fumble around and you see there's all sorts of other things. In fact, uh, I even have uh, if we want to create a very active ecosystem, um, for the worms that you would have ingested, there's actually these that you can swallow and they will eat the worms inside you and then your body will just Pass them, and then, you know, you can have a natural remedy. It'll it might tickle a little bit as that uh, as that uh, takes place inside of you, but uh, it's been successful. I just find some people would like a magical approach, and others wouldn't. But especially around here, especially I don't know what it is. The, people don't trust me. It's you know you come in and you show them that the bug is clinging to the blue side of the vial. It's going to indicate a weather change, and they, they just treat you like you're mad. So, mind if I jump in? What mm. what are you predicting for the weather? Oh, yes, you, you overheard. Well, I'm glad someone here might believe me. Well, little lady, I'll tell you that the weather's about to shift. Uh, I can't really tell you based on the bug what it is. All I can tell you is that the bug in the inside this vial, and it's like some sort of little water beetle, because uh, the the water's uh, the vial's filled with a fluid of some kind, and there's like a little uh, there's like a little four legged uh, insect that's just sort of like ooh, swirling around, and there's a couple little um, there's a couple little uh, painted strips around the vial, and um, and the bug seems to be clinging to blue, uh, and and so th what this is telling me is that the weather's going to be changing, I, I, but I can't tell you to what. So whatever it is, be prepared. What happened to your bug's other legs? Oh, this one just has four. Oh. Bug like that. Where did you get it? Oh, well, these uh, you can find them. Uh, you know, there's a there's a lot of streams, especially this time of year, that are pouring down off the mountain. I mean, just oodles of streams, just running water as far as the eye can see, and <laughs> and. Uh, it, it, it's the it's the time that these things are starting to wake up and and they go about their natural business and uh, and so I was out trying to collect some of them and of course they don't live forever so I got to make sure I I find their eggs and and you know I'm, I'm and he kind of like taps on a chest and I, I do my best to try and breed them too. 
I have mm. I have seeds and eggs and bugs and leaves and teas and incense and in insects. I have all sorts of stuff that rhymes and doesn't rhyme. You want, well, I like you things want that rhyme. Components? Those I got are spell fun. components. Um, well, sometimes I'm more of a of a wand waver kind of wizard, but um, there are other other people. Ah, the old traditions who, who prefer the natural components. No, I understand. You know? I understand. It's you kids and you using all your fancy arcane focuses and wands and whatever. Good sir. I'll tell you the Caps. market for the mad the, 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 the market for this stuff is just. I don't know why I do it sometimes. Maybe it's just a part of me that that uh, yearns for the old days. Good sir. Yes. If you would be so kind as you as to present your holy symbol, please. My oh well, uh certainly yeah. Uh, I'm glad that you wish to know a little bit more about uh, the cause that I serve, and uh, and so he kind of fumbles around and he pulls out a. Give me just one second here. Because that was actually mentioned. Ah, so he pulls out, um, yep, a little amulet that has two black antlers uh, on it. Um, would I be able to make a religion check to see if I know which to which god he swears allegiance? Uh, sure. Go ahead and, and roll. Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, if, if if either of you, because uh, Bright's out here with you, and, uh, at, you know, and she's a, she's a bit of a keen mind, uh, one of you can roll religion with advantage. Uh, what's your religion? Uh... Uh, I think this would be more appropriate for Celine. I'm not really a religious person. I well, then I'll roll, I'll, I'll, I'll roll it with advantage. With a 21. Ooh, 21. Very good. Um, all right. So with that, it's... Um, so this is... Um, this is an amulet that uh, it, it's not necessarily maybe a, a major god in the pantheon of of Mesotopia or Mesomasca. Uh, it's it's like a a superstition everyone knows. Uh, it, it's kind of like if you say someone's name that you actually want to bless you in Greek, you kind of give that patui uh, to, to drive away the evil, or you know. So it, it's something that is uh, that's common, but not necessarily a religion in and of itself. Um, but it does seem to be an amulet for a um, an entity known as Black Bess, uh, who is uh, considered to be a, a goddess of sorts of misfortune. Uh, and so, the by wearing the amulet of these black antlers, um, as the superstition goes, it is supposed to. If you feel that you're being plagued by misfortune, uh, the amulet is supposed to try and draw that misfortune away from you. Um, and so, it's it's a holy symbol, but it's also kind of a ward. Um, it's also just a firm belief, and it's it's nothing like mm -hmm. the the faith of Weejas that has temples everywhere, and you know, uh, just libraries of religious doctrine and research into magic and death and all this other stuff. Um, but it is, uh, you know, it, it's fairly widespread, very kind of country, mm -hmm. uh, country superstition. Um, mm, quite. That, that is there a cleric of such a thing? Uh, it's not impossible, given, I guess, the nature of faith uh, and magic. Um, but there's not exactly like, oh, you're from the temple of, uh, you're, you're from uh, the temple of uh, Bess. Uh, you know, and then you make, like, the, the horn symbol or something and is a show of reverence. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I he does, uh, when, he, when uh, Bellum flashes the, uh, the symbol, he does kind of look a little, like, a, a little ashamed. Because it's like admitting to someone that, you know, you're bad luck. It, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a... Uh, um, you know, it, it's something you, you maybe don't want to broadcast, but by wearing the amulet, you're showing that may, you're trying to take responsibility for it, or you know, you're you're trying to use that energy in some way. Hmm. Um, Celine kind of thinks for a moment. It's like, ah, now I see why the people think as they do. Hmm. Good sir, have you ever thought that wearing 
a symbol such as that might be a bit of a double-edged sword. Well, for a while, yeah, if it uh, if it collects too much bad luck. Uh, but I make sure that I bury these uh, in the places that I go so that the uh, the bad luck bleeds away. And then as I go around on, uh, in my routes, I'll dig them up after a while and the bad luck will have seeped off. And, uh, and I will uh, wear the re refresh symbol again. Hmm. I see. H have you thought, good sir, that maybe in doing this action, you are inadvertently doing the things that the country folk accuse you of? Oh, no, that's... <laughs> Bellum says that's just a silly superstition. <laughs> it's like, um, this is this is when Sel Selena will actually pull out her mu- Um... No, pull out what? I'm, I'm sorry, you're, the voice cut out. Her, her, uh, her mask. Okay. And she'll I place- I nice wearing it on. And she'll place the mask on her face, which covers her entire face. It's just the plain, um, yeah, the, the, plain the very, mask. very, the very plain porcelain mask. And she draws out her holy symbol and holds it up. Is like, are you sure? Oh well. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, and and I, I think Norali, you were making the point that because you're in a town, you would be wearing masks, uh, unless you're indoors. Oh yeah, no, no. She yeah, she's she's doing it on uh on, on principle because we're in a we're in a small town right now. yeah um because i remember well, it's only uh, super enforced well no cause... it's because you're outside you can you can only take your mask off inside well i i remember mm -hmm. that um that um the the uh, wearing of masks is only super enforced in the uh four majors or at least I that's what that i remember was only in the cities um yeah yeah, I, I mean, for sure it's super enforced. You can do it here, and you probably do see people who are wearing their masks out and about because it is, uh, I guess, normal for them or they're from a city. Uh, so, yeah, you, you don't have to necessarily here in Green Shield. Um, you know, you might you might get different reactions. Because we didn't people. stand by. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll stick. If you're in the major city, then that's fine. In the small ones, you certainly can, and people do, um, you know. And then I guess it just comes down to what, what do people think if you're flaunting that as a tradition, you know? Well, what or you know, are you saying Green Shield's not a, a, a good enough city for you to hide your face? Um, but you know, whatever. If you give into that peer pressure, that's up to you. Um, all right. Yeah. So yeah, you, you pull but... it out, and he says, "Oh well." I... Uh, yeah. Uh, unlike you, I have no temple. I have no shrine. I, I do what good I can. It's like. The, so, that is that is not the point that I make, good sir. The point the point that I make is this: if I was to take this holy symbol and bury it somewhere, only death would follow in the area around. Well, yeah, but that's that's because that's a part of the the tradition for. Uh, you know, for followers of, of Ouijas, and uh, death is a part of things. I simply am, unfortunately, drawing the bad luck from the land, it seems, and, and so to try and, you know, live that much longer, make a couple more coins to rub together, I bleed it off into these amulets. This is a long practice tradition, and when it's time to uh, change my amulet, I bury this one. I, I've buried amulets uh, by trees. I've buried them in brooks. I've buried them on the beach. I've put them under rocks. I've I've put them uh, uh, here and there in order to so, uh, have the bad um, luck drain away. Um, so I know just perspective on this, but um, I have a kind of a different perspective, and I have all kinds of questions. The first one is, um, if you were to bury so these, if you were to bury one of these amulets next to, say, a tree, could it like change the tree? Oh no, no, that's just silly superstition. Um, well, I mean, it doesn't really seem that silly compared to just the amulets in general. So if the amulets are real, um, I mean, the sort of thing that could happen. 
Um, so and then this... I have another question, and that is, how long has this been going on for you? Because kind of the same thing happens with me, um, and it seems like we kind of have taken different approaches to solving this problem, and it's really just kind of unusual for me to meet someone else like me, because you're the first one oh. that I have. Well, I've been plagued for some time, but I've only been, uh, I've only been uh, in the... Uh, I guess I, I've only been protecting myself from misfortune for the past couple of years. And I'll tell you, it has done wonders. I may still get accused of, you know, dog's fur just falling out after I pass through town, or, again, mur uh, milk curdling, or the fact that I somehow sell... You know, look, these these are authentic tapeworm eggs. These are real. They, they do, I, I bred them myself. I've, uh, you know... It, have you ever tried milking a, a pregnant tapeworm for their eggs? I have. You know, th this is the real deal here, and people think that I'm trying to scam them. That's the real misfortune, but yeah. there's nothing I can do because it's not bad luck on me. It's bad luck okay, on others. So if only people wore, and he opens up a chest, if only people wore these medallions to stave off bad luck, I think there'd be a lot less of it. Okay, so um, first I want to look at the medallions. Do they look magical in any way uh not necessarily they look like uh little clay discs with uh black antlers painted on them and uh kind of a simple oh. uh, oh, uh so a, there a is, simple, like a, a hemp and twine or something uh for the neck um and then so for example just just as an example when i came out here i followed you out and i stepped in poop i haven't stepped in poop in like a month but just today I just did, and it was right when I was following you. So do you think that was your fault, or do you think that was my fault, or was it just something that happened? Oh, that's your bad luck. See, I don't know that it is, because my bad luck happens to other people. I don't have bad luck that happens to me. Well, it sounds like you need to buy one of these uh, one of these amulets. Give it a try. I'm starting to understand why people think you're scamming them. <laughs> <laughs> allow me to it's, allow me to put it to you and i won't and what what could it hurt that you won't step in dog poop again if anything it that could hurt validates everything i've said yeah uh, it doesn't, allow doesn't seem like something i would want so um i'm, I'm starting to, to get a little confused because i mean it's on the one hand i want to believe you but on the other hand a lot of things you're saying don't make any sense uh, allow, allow me to put it to you like this, good sir. Energy it never destroyed. Right. It's only transferred from one to another. If you are a misfortunate, actively using these amulets to bleed away this misfortune from yourself, and then you were burying them places, the only place that the misfortune has to go is around. Wherever you... That is the way of thing. It is the way with any kind of energy, whether it be the energy of misfortune, the energy of death, the energy of life itself. Well, even if that is the case, look at all the good I've, I'm doing, people. I'm helping them lose weight. I'm helping them extend their ears. I'm helping change their color. I'm bringing so much good to people that... Let's say that what you're saying is true. Then, what's a little bad luck amulet buried somewhere? Uh, you know, it's been accumulating for a while. If I'm doing other people so much good. That comes down to a question of ethics, and I will respond to your question with another question. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that E word? I've heard far too many people try and talk to me about that. I'm a, I'm a simple merchant, and if you're here for eggs or leaves or leeches, I, these teeth leeches are hot. Everyone's gonna want them once they once they learn about them. If you want them, I can sell them to you. But I appreciate it, uh, my my lady of death. Uh, he he's trying to use a title respectfully, even if it's kind of a ham-fisted effort. Uh, but uh, I. I I find that these discussions can often sour a relationship between people and I'm not here to cause misfortune. I'm not here to, to try and lose friends. I'm here to make friends. I'm here to make allies, people to help spread the word. 
why use magic? Oh, oh, oh. And magic can go wrong when I guarantee you these 100% natural leeches will act the same way every single time. Have you ever been to the flower fields? Those leeches yes. will still be uh, rooting around in your mouth the same as before, but, you know, where's where's your magic in that point in time? Mm-hmm. That's what I... He didn't give you time to answer, by the way. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Nature's uh, the way she, to go. She, she holds up a hand that's like... I know the flower fields and its fields of wild magic intimately. It's true. The, the, she conjured up a unicorn one time there. So did I. The the it's like it's like the energy of the flower fields is something with which I am intimately familiar. But I will quote something to you. It's not from my own goddess. It is from another god. One that people daily. In some places, there are even festivals. Now, which... I did actually have a god in mind. Where is he? Oh, it's the It's like... This god is... Savras. A god of divination and of fatalism, and somewhat of luck. Whenever you place something into a system, whenever you place energy into a system, that system can only give you the kind of that you put it in. You bleed your own misfortune and bury it, and it leeches into the world around you. All that all that happens is you are taking it from yourself and putting it under other albeit inadvertently. Mm, I don't know. It's like it's everything I've, I've it's done like, to I've, try and stay alive and earn an honest living. I don't think I've hurt anyone, and uh, if nothing else, I know a lot of people just consider this to be a simple, uh, you know, a country bumpkin ritual, a way to ward off to, uh, you know, the, the, the concept of, of misfortune and bad luck that follows you, and um, everything that I can do to help me out. Well, wouldn't you do the same? You know, wouldn't you try and tap every resource you could uh, to make you more successful, especially if you felt that you live some sort of hellish cursed existence? Hopefully you don't. Celine, Celine just smiles under her mask at that, like, oh. <laughs> Hellish cursed existences, like, what? This <laughs> is like, I'll leave, I'll leave this. If you truly wish to make a difference without hurting other people, then you need something to offset your misfortune, not... Go to a place of power and pray for guidance. See who answers. Mm. Uh, well, uh, if I make my way there, then perhaps I can. But really, I'm I'm a busy man. I have I have worms to milk. I and by the way, some Mordecai, you're just hearing all this for the first time. I have worms to milk. I have leaves to crush. Uh, I have uh, tinctures and incense to to manufacture, and it's. I, I, I do what I can. I, I really do. Mordecai, as you're coming out, he's, you see that there's this symbol that he's tucking away and talking with Selene. Um, you've been around uh, for a while. It, it, is, uh, it is a good luck optimistically symbol, but it is, it's, uh, it's just kind of like a, a misfortune warding symbol. Um, you know, th there's a couple different customs that you're aware of. Uh, now, how you want to treat it as a religion, uh, kind of as Selene is taking it, like as a matter of faith. Or as a matter of, I don't know. I, I don't wear white after September because it's just not done. It's a it's a thing of fashion or custom or whatever. Um, it's you can handle it as you will, but you at least kind of recognize the the symbol that was tucked away um, as being a optimistically good luck. I guess pessimistically a bad luck symbol. Um, and uh, and there's various customs uh, for. Uh, 
you know, that people have done to uh, handle them. Mm. Yeah, but I, I do not desire for her attention. I'm plagued by her favor. Uh, that that being misfortune. And if you are plagued by her favor, so then it is time that you found someone new to serve. Uh, but Mordecai, you're on the scene. Uh, Bright looks like she's uh, um, doing paying work. more attention to my spellbook. Yeah, she's just sort of like in the book, kind of doing little whatever's reading, uh, wiggling her nose. And uh, Selene is out here talking. There's also a small, there's a small crowd, I don't know, like half a dozen at most people that are kind of backed away and watching this interaction uh, since there, this does seem to be a person of uh, some repute. Um, Lean on the shoulder. Drawing attention here. So, <laughs> this is this is when it turns around and uh, leans over and wanders. Okay. Oh, do you not like me having the limelight sometimes? <laughs> she's being cheeky. It's like it's, it's very obviously the way that she says it. It's very obviously cheeky and in general. And All right. Bellum turns to you. <laughs> My good sir, could I interest you in anything? Uh, do you need some leeches, a tea perhaps? Would you like one of these medallions? Are you plagued by misfortune? You're just seeing like ten kind of swinging from his hands. I'm not really the superstitious type. Oh, well, I understand about the medallions, but I, I promise you, these leeches, they will just absolutely suck the blood right out of anything that's harmful uh, to you. Uh, put them on your gums, freshen them up, put them on a wound, clean it up. These leeches uh, do wonders. I'm not nope. sure if it's part of the spell or not, but you can see me rolling my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have we got what we need here? I don't need anything. Celine, I was like, no, no, I, 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 I think, I think we are done here. Uh, How close am I? Am I to finishing my spell? Like, uh, it takes eleven minutes. Or... Uh. Detect magic, I think, is just ten. Ten, okay. Uh, 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 what's the what's the normal casting time on? It's just one action. Yeah, then yeah, it's ten minutes. Ten minutes and six seconds specifically. <laughs> um, oh, nice. Um, yes. Uh, so bright. Uh, your uh, your detect magic uh, ritual is uh, is finishing up here, and okay. uh, you aren't detecting anything that is magical on the cart or on Bellum. Um, I mean, th th there's some things you'd expect off of your party members, and probably yeah, some minor ma magical items on uh, from uh, one or two of the people in the crowd. Ooh, I'd be interested in those. <laughs> okay, but but he's not. Uh... He's not carrying anything who's magical. Okay. I thought it was worth a shot. But I'll keep the detect magic up because it lasts uh, 10 minutes, I think. Okay. Alright. We're ready to go poke some other people for information. The barkeep wasn't all that. I just want to take a quick look inside. Okay. Because... Somebody's glowing, and I want to see who's glowing. <laughs> um, you're, uh, there's a, uh, a woman there who's wearing a, uh, a ring that's uh, glowing with uh, some illusion magic. Um, she must be glowing with a silent spell. I didn't hear what you said. Oh. Uh, there's a woman who's wearing a, a ring that has some illusion magic on it. 
and uh, there is a um, there is a a patrolman who is wearing a, uh, a, a part of his magic uh, uniform has an abjuration spell on it, uh, and he's there it, making sure that there's no trouble. Um, I'm like going to go ahead and walk over to the woman. Yeah, you, you said you're walking up this to the time. woman. It's I, like, I'm listening. I, I know our, our server is having... Uh, it's been dipping into yellow and... Uh, I don't know. The Discord's being kind of wonky at time. Yeah. Uh, some yeah, is some Yeah, Discord is like that. Uh, so what are you doing to the woman that has the, the ring? I just want to see her. Like, what is she doing? What does she look like? Who is she? Oh, uh, she is a... Uh, appears to be a, a young, uh, like maybe early 20s woman. Uh, human. Dressed in you know, decent clothes. Uh, not her Sunday best, but she's, uh, she's you know, not uh, scraping by in rags. Is she doing anything in particular? Is she with the group? Um, no. She's just there watching. Okay. And what does the ring look like? It's a little silver band. Plain silver band. Okay. Yeah, as she's watching, she's just it, it's on her finger, and she's just sort of observing everything that's happening. And you can see it's, it's on her... Uh, she's wearing it on her middle finger. That's so interesting. Mm. Am I the only one in the Tumbled Witch that's part of our group? Uh, you're you're oh. outside the Tumbled Witch right now. Oh, here. oh, I thought she was inside. Oh, so she's, so she's one of the looky loos who's watching to see what happens with the quack. Yes. Exactly. Ah, okay, okay. Um, then... Okay, um, I'm going to. And how many people are like her? Like just that are just watching. There's about six of them. They're not all together. Uh, okay. I'm, they're all they're um, standing-ish together, but it's not like they're holding hands or anything. And just to be clear, it's just her ring that's making illusion magic. She's not like just radiating illusion magic all over. Uh, correct. Her ring is illusion magic. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just just remember her and remember what she looks like in case we see her again later. Okay. Not a good time. That's a, that's I, don't, I don't see an angle. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Mordecai is going to be bringing up uh, an interesting factoid. Do you think leeches would be able to suck sap from like that made of I bet they could, yeah. But then they just swallow the sap. It would be like they'd be like maple syrup leeches. If we had Maybe. plenty of leeches would have good enough samples. And that's true. We could always I think that's a really good idea. I think just we should take some out. leeches. Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna back to that. Okay. Just yeah, Selene has wandered off. Ethan's probably good. something private. <laughs> so it occurs to me, sir, that you for sale. Oh, yes, yes, of course. What's the size? Like, do you have fairly large ones? Yeah, I have them in several sizes. I suppose it depends on... Uh... And what you need them to do, uh, you know, if you if you need them large enough to fit in your mouth, uh, if you need them to, you know, crawl on your wounds, uh, especially if you have a, a particularly bad one, um, or if you just want a novelty leech, I, I do have a couple extremely large ones, but I wouldn't recommend applying them. I wouldn't necessarily be applying them for myself. Well, so. if you were looking to pull a prank, just realize that, that once they become your leeches, I'm absolved. 
I'm not here oh, bringing course. misfortune to people. Of course. This is my own doing. All right, because, I mean, I've had people who pulled the trick about putting a bucket of leeches above a door, and when someone walks in, it spills on their on their head. That's all on you. And I'm not saying that I didn't just give you that idea for someone that you don't mm. like. That's completely mm. your idea. It's not a very nice prank. I prefer a bucket of confetti. Confetti is nice. That's fun. Um, also, you still kind of get the person, because then they have to clean up all the confetti. <laughs> but yeah, I think I have... Uh, There's the worst. Uh, he, he checks one of his trunks. Oh, yeah, looks like, uh, I don't know, four. I got four biggins here. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. They're all about, gotta... uh, they're all about a foot long. I think I'll take one. Do you have a container for it, too? Oh, it just so it's happens so... That, that I can sell a container for a foot long leech. I'll take. Now, just out of curiosity, when you say foot long leech, is that when it's contracted or. Ex that's that's right in its current state, it's a foot long. But is it currently contracted or is it expanded? Uh, it, it has not engorged. I'll assume contracted and think that this thing can go three feet long with it. Ah, uh, so yeah, if you need a, a jar and some water, and uh, are you, are you gonna need some? Uh, well, look, I, I I don't know how you plan on feeding it. If you have some blood you want to give it, then that's fine. These things can just take blood. <laughs> these that's... these are prodigious little suckers. I tell you what. Uh, that's that's but, not uh, hard. Preferable if you can attach them to something and just kind of let them go for a while. They really take care of themselves. Leeches are very low maintenance pets. I wonder if Norlai would like them. She collects. <laughs> Norlai got a present. Catch. <laughs> yeah, I think that 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 should work just. All right. Well, uh, specialty stuff here. Uh, looks like I'm gonna need six gold, and I'll I'll give you I'll I'll give you a good container for it, uh, and uh, of course this this leech with um. Uh, a very strong background, very good pedigree. Okay, so is he, um, is he giving me? Is 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 he trying to hike the price upon me? Uh, there's no prices listed. Um, he's giving you a glass container. Glass is kind of expensive. You're also getting a premium all natural leech. So another thought occurs to me. Um, so once you have the leech, like, is there a way to get the stuff that the leech is back out of the leech? Is there like a smaller leech that you attach to the main leech to get the leech contents out? Uh, I can't say I've ever done something like that before. They, they don't tend to attack their own for some reason. Must be a, an unspoken agreement. But uh, uh, I guess if you ever wanted the whatever it ate, you could, open it. you could just open it up. It's the same way with vampires. They don't usually bite each other. <laughs> Whoa, oh, hey. Shh, shh, shh. Do not talk about vampires. That brings very bad luck. I, yeah. If there's some around hey. here, I don't need that kind of pressure. Last thing I need is for people to say that I brought a vampire into town. Yeah, because you totally didn't. But I imagine if you ever wanted your blood back from a leech or a vampire, just, you know, cut them open and there it is. Okay. Mm. I'll keep that in mind. For both cases. <laughs> I just kind of shove away a little bit. <laughs> okay. Six gold. That seems like a lot for But I suppose I can part with six gold. You made a wise choice. And he turns to the, he turns to the crowd. Everyone, see, look. I am not a bringer of misfortune. I brought this man, the one foot long leech with a custom glass uh, jar that he has been wanting his entire life. Else, why would we be so, right now on the streets conducting 
this transaction. As he, so, so uh, laying, I'm all, so just <laughs> cops. So Lee just cops underneath her mask and it's just. <laughs> As he was talking <laughs> and blustering about himself, I took my leech in its jar and walked away. Okay, so yeah. you, you have a one foot long leech kind of curled around. It's in a gar jar of kind of murky water um, with uh, basic hair instructions of uh, feed it whenever mm. and try not to let it die. Thanks for your business, <laughs> Bellum. Mm -hmm. Run away, You didn't say that. You implied it. Um, I, I didn't specify you. Okay, mm -hmm. just entertained. I, I. <laughs> Alright, so what else are we picking up? We didn't know that we needed a leech, but we got Yeah, so I've got this spade that we can use to maybe dig up the root crystals. Maybe, yeah. Be able to crack crystals and break off pieces? Oh. Maybe we could get, um, like a pick or something along those lines? Yeah. Have one here in town. I mean, even if it's not, I mean, it's obviously it's not like a mining town like Robbie, but they'll, but they'll have, you know, everybody. There's always farming and. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Did the other just run off with? No, no, I don't see them. Do I see them? Alright. Do you see what? Uh, I'm sorry, the, the it's, it's cutting in and out. Everybody oh. else. <laughs> no, you did not see me. I'm not eating a cookie. You're not eating a cookie, <laughs> I presume? <laughs> Cookies long gone. <laughs> Alright. We pick up a mining... And then we should be good. You know, I hope so. Okay, so you've had your interaction with Bellum. A couple people are approaching his cart after seeing that someone was willing to do business with him. Uh, he'll thank you for that business, and uh, you walk away with your leech. Um... And, uh, Bright, you have your, um, you know, you have your, uh, your Detect Magic still up, and, um, nothing, nothing is really pinging on your radar, uh, for it. So, I think we've solved the, the sap problem. I mean, all we have to do is, um, turn the leech invisible, and then I'll, I'll conjure up Betty, because she's invisible, and we'll have her carry the leech. And she can stick it to the tree, and then after a while, she can take it away again. That sounds like a very effective. And she has kind of a limited range. She can only go a little bit yeah. away from me. Um, I think it's um, like 30 feet or something like that. Um, so uh, that's kind of a limitation. But it's a tree, so hopefully it can't reach out from that far away. I don't there we know. go. Oh, it's 60 feet. She can go 60 feet from me. That's better. That's better. All right. Well. And um, I also have a spell I can use that um, can help us. Like, although, um, I mean, it, it's a concentration spell, so. Now we're just going to figure out what this darn thing is. Yeah. Um, and he didn't know. Um, and I that maybe he had like created the magic tree by burying his magic trinkets mm. but I think that's baloney I don't think that he has anything to do with it I think he's mm. a complete fraud but it's good that he had some leeches mm. an unvarnished was opinion that. from Bright mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I mean maybe Siphonix I mean he gave us kind of a general direction and we know that we're going to have to fight 
the uh, the flying creature. So when we get to the flying creature, maybe we can maybe we can see it. It's supposed to stand out once you get in the forest. Yeah. And we can always. I mean, I have a flying spell, or we could even send Picky Sue. Although I'm kind of afraid to send her into the anti magic zone for the kind of the same reason as you. So um, maybe I could maybe I could cast the flying spell on Celine. Or, or even uh, Norlai. Norlai, it's really fun to fly. It is pretty fun to fly. Yeah, I don't I like don't being high up in trees. Like <laughs> I'm far away. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I'm ready to start. Yep, get a mining pick, and that's really all the other supplies we need, unless somebody else wants something interesting. You may want, you might, uh, depending on how long it takes, because you're going to be exploring in the forest, um, you may want rations, or you may want to make sure that you have a way to, uh, you know, hunt or trap or gather or collect uh, water while you're out, too. Or Mordecai, you also need to consider your own, uh, your own special diet. Your own hydration. Yep. Uh, I... Are we taking Brayson with us? That, that's up to you all if you want to take Brayson into the woods. Long we're planning to be gone and um, to take with us, because I don't know the thing that we have with us. Right. Although I don't really have that much. You can bring water. Because it, it would be a decision of whether or not I stop it. Um, the bucket field, or if I go get water skin. Oh, I would go with with water skins for sure. I mean that. That's the, what I need to do. The the barrel is kind of hard. To have unless we have braces. Mm -hmm. Yep. Otherwise, I think everything that's on Brace and we don't necessarily need. I don't think we're going to be spending more than a couple of days out. It's always hard to know. <laughs> spend a day traveling, see if we can find it. If not, we spend that other the next day coming back. So I, I heard an okay. Oh, I'm what, do, you, do you have your plan together, or what's what's going to be happening then? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not satisfied with what Mordecai said, unless somebody else complains. I'm going to go buy blood, and we're going to buy a mining pick, and then everything we have on our person is what we're taking with us. We're not taking. Are we keeping the kid? Keep on our person. I don't care about the cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, uh, rations for everyone if they need to stop. Yeah. I have 19 in the party inventory. They're vegetarian. Uh, I still have... They are? I have the vegetarian ones. I'm vegetarian. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, aren't you bloodetarian? No. <laughs> this is before I turn. Oh, I had nineteen. Oh, I so okay. Well, I'll I'll definitely I've met you rations. So <laughs> I didn't even know. We should, we've never talked about this somehow, and all the things we've talked about, it's never come up. <laughs> I mean, I like fish, but I don't have fish jerky. That's kind of okay. Um. Great. Well, um, it's not important for right now because they have nine of my own kind of rations. Okay, in the future. <laughs> I am not ah. going to eat them. I have no use for them now. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's uh. nice. Mm. All right. So how much is it going to cost for a month? Uh, madly. How much is what going on? I'm sorry, the, the voice is being super bad. At least on my end, from what I can hear, it's like uh, every other word from you. Is. I'm having, I'm not having issues, actually. I, I'm not having issues either. 
weird. And I that's weird because I have the worst. I have objectively the worst internet. Uh, um. But yes. How much is a mining pick? Uh, there's actually <laughs> one in uh, the player's handbook. One second. I don't have it open. Chapter so, five. Um, equipment. A minus pick is two. Because I already had it open. Yep, two gold, and it weighs ten pounds. Ten pick? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jade the Swole will have to carry. <laughs> yeah, with that non strength. Alright. <laughs> That's an old miner. I'll add it. Alright, you'll take it. We're right beside right. the climber's kit. Alright. So there's that. What was the weight on that again? Ten pounds. 10 pounds. And then two approachers to go buy two water skins full of blood. Okay, you have the water skins, you just need the blood? Yes. Okay, uh, it would just be a copper apiece. They're not gonna pitch a fit at me about it? No. Nope. They're not gonna... Not, all right. Nope. People here, are being uh, extremely here, accommodating make, about these things. People are making uh, all kinds of... Um, you know, they're they're using in Green Shield they use as much as they can. And that's from the mm. wood, that's from the game. And so people buy blood for uh for cooking, for health reasons, like just as a like a protein shake kind of a thing. Um it, it's not super common, but uh it, people will cook with it or they'll include it in feed, uh, to make sure that they're trying to recycle and, and their animals are getting some uh some uh, protein more than just vegetation. So you're not getting a lot of looks here from people who are a lot more rustic, who are a lot more, um, you know, uh, conservation minded because mm -hmm. while, while they do chalk it up to just fairy tales, um, they don't want to anger the spirits of the woods by being wasteful. Mm -hmm. And so it's something everyone knows, but doesn't believe in, but lives according to that belief. And it, and it's odd kind of paradox. So, Fair enough. Um, so yeah, blood is available, and uh, I mean, even asking about it, like, you know, do you have any problems, or you're kind of fishing for, are there vampires here, because you've had an unusual amount, uh, kind of what you started in uh, Snam Fi, and there, mm. there doesn't seem to be any kind of, um, there doesn't seem to be any kind of uh, undue burden for supplying blood to people, especially strangers. So. No undue purchase or no hiking purchases, no hiking. Yeah, it it in the butcher's opinion, this is normal. Hmm. All right. There's. So I think we're ready. All right, then I'll tell you what I have. Uh, I have 108 uh, as, as the time. Why don't we take our quick little break, uh, refresh ourselves? I could use uh, something to drink. Um, and uh, when we come back, we'll set out on the search for the flesh tree. Um, so if we go 10 minutes, I guess we'll just go 12 and come back at 120. Uh, so 12 minutes from now. If that works for you all. That works. All right. We'll see you in 12. <laughs> 